flight controllers here in the Payload Operations Integration Center work with crew members every day to make science happen. Now, most of the time, that's just for a six-month mission, and then a new crew arrives. Well, we wondered what it's been like to work with a crew member for an entire year. Apparently, communication is the key. One of our payload communicators, Samantha Harris, joins me now. Samantha, you're one of the handful of people in this room that actually gets to speak to the astronauts directly. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I am a PACOM, or Payload Communications Manager, which means it's my job to manage all of the written and verbal communication between the Payload Operation Integration Center here in Huntsville, Alabama, and the astronaut crew on board the space station. I'm sure you build relationships with them uh, even before they launch with training, but I'm curious if this one-year mission has really been different for you guys. Uh, yes, it has been actually different in a lot of interesting ways. So a lot of the time when we work with crew members for less periods of time, sometimes we'll let things go, things that normally um, for a shorter duration of time might not end up being issues because we know that we're not going to be working with that crew member for a prolonged period of time. Uh, but with someone like Scott Kelly, who we know is going to be up there for a year, we want to correct these issues because we know that it's going to be a longer duration relationship. Uh, and so Scott wants these things corrected and we on the ground want these kinds of things corrected as well. So that's been an interesting aspect of working with a crew member for a longer period of time. Pretty much like working here on the ground with, with everyone else. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's also a psychological aspect to, to this as well and, and you guys do become Kind of like family, I guess. Yes, that's true. So we get to interact with them a little bit while they're on the ground, and then when they fly, uh, we know that Scott's been going through some difficult things on orbit, trying to live up there for a year um, apart from everybody on the ground, and so trying to help him get through that, to build that trust with him is one of the few voices that he hears on a regular basis, um, trying to build that trust. And we're trying to get we're trying to learn more from this one-year mission to, to get to somewhere like Mars. Yes, exactly. So one of the biggest things we're trying to do is learn more about the psychological aspects of living in space for prolonged periods of time. Um, and so there are a lot of aspects to that. So things like learning how perhaps having plants on board the space station with our veggie experiment, um, being able to eat fresh food and have flowers growing in space can impact the psychological um, elements and the mood of our crew members. Um, also things like comfort food. So we have an experiment called Astro Palette, learning how crew members, um, how their mood is impacted by having things like comfort food available on orbit. And, and a lot more science to come. Even though he's coming home in two weeks, we'll learn a lot more about what you guys have been working on for the past year, probably in the next year or two. Yes, that's true. A lot about all kinds of different things. Um, and again, also our habitability experiment. So learning how to better design vehicles for the future that can help our crew members to be more effective and efficient as they live in space for longer periods of time. And I'm sure you have plenty of stories to share, but uh, I'll let you tell me those off camera.